But if you want to continue the slaves of bankers and pay the cost of your own slavery, let them continue to create money and to control credit. Americans are slowly figuring this out. Today, over 3,200 cities and counties have endorsed the proposal of a nonprofit organization called Sovereignty. The Sovereignty Movement calls for Congress to authorize the Secretary of the Treasury to issue $90 billion per year of U.S. notes, not Federal Reserve notes nor debt-based bonds, to loan money interest-free to cities, counties, and school districts for needed capital improvements. Remarkably, and to their praise, the Community Bankers Association of Illinois, representing 515 member banks, has endorsed this sovereignty proposal, a good step in the right direction. As Milton Friedman has repeatedly pointed out, no severe depression can occur without a severe contraction of money. In our system, only the Fed, the Bank of International Settlements, with U.S. bankers' cooperation, or a combination of the largest Wall Street banks could cause a depression. In other words, our economy is so huge and resilient, a depression just can't happen by accident. Unless we reform our banking system, they will always have that power. They can pull the plug on our economy any time they choose. The only solution is to abolish the Fed and the fractional reserve banking system and withdraw from the BIS. Only that will break the power of the international bankers over our economy. And keep in mind, a stock market crash itself cannot cause a severe depression. Only the severe contraction of our money supply can cause a severe depression. The stock market crash of 1929 only wiped out market speculators, mostly the small to medium ones, resulting in $3 billion in wealth changing hands. But it served as a smokescreen for a 33% contraction in credit by the Fed over the next four years, which resulted in over $40 billion in wealth from the American middle class being transferred to the big banks. Then, despite impotent howls of protest from a divided Congress, the independent Fed kept the money supply contracted for a full decade. Only World War II ended the terrible suffering the Fed inflicted on the American people. In a depression, the remaining wealth of the debt-burdened American middle class will be wiped out by unemployment, declining wages, and the resulting foreclosures. If we start to act to reform our monetary system, the money changers may do what they did in 1929 and then the 1930s, crash the stock market and use that as a smokescreen while contracting the money supply. But if we're determined to fight to regain control over our money, we can come out of it fairly quickly, perhaps in only a very few months, as U.S. notes begin to circulate and replace the money withdrawn by the bankers. The longer we wait, the greater the danger will permanently lose control of our nation. But some still wonder why the international bankers would want to cause a depression. Wouldn't that be killing the goose that is currently laying all those golden interest eggs? Remember what Larry Bates said at the first of this videotape. You see, in periods of economic upheaval, in economic crisis, wealth is not destroyed. It is merely transferred. Do we have any hints as to what the money changers have in store for us? Here's what David Rockefeller, the chairman of Chase Manhattan Bank, the largest Wall Street bank, had to say. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nation will accept the new world order. So, crisis is needed to fulfill their plans quickly. The only question is when the crisis will occur. Fortunately, we probably have a little time. It's unlikely that this crisis will occur before the 1996 elections, but after that, the danger begins rising. But whether or not they decide to cause a crash or a depression through relentless increases in taxes and the loss of hundreds of thousands of jobs being sent overseas thanks to trade agreements such as GATT and NAFTA, the American middle class is an endangered species. 
cheaper labor, including slave labor in Red China, which Harry Wu has heroically documented, is being used to compete with American labor. In other words, money is being consolidated in fewer and fewer hands as never before in the history of this nation or the world. Without reform, the American middle class will soon be extinct, leaving only the very rich few and the very many poor, as has already occurred in most of the world. We've been warned of all this by congressmen, presidents, industrialists, and economists down through the years. Religious leaders, too, have seen the danger. About 1898, during the time of William Jennings Bryan, Pope Leo XIII put it this way. On the one side, there is the party which holds the power because it holds the wealth, which has in its grasp all labor and all trade, which manipulates for its own benefit and its own purposes all the sources of supply, and which is powerfully represented in the councils of state itself. On the other side, there is the needy and powerless multitude, sore and suffering. Rapacious usury, which, although more than once condemned by the church, is nevertheless under a different form, but with the same guilt, still practiced by avaricious and grasping men, so that a small number of very rich men have been able to lay upon the masses of the poor a yoke little better than slavery itself. More recently, during America's Great Depression, Pope Pius XI spoke of the same problem. In our days, not alone is wealth accumulated, but immense power and despotic economic domination is concentrated in the hands of a few. This power becomes particularly irresistible when exercised by those who, because they hold and control money, are able also to govern credit and determine its allotment. For this reason, supplying, so to speak, the lifeblood to the entire economic body and grasping, as it were, in their hands the very soul of the economy so that no one dare breathe against their will. Educate your friends. Our country needs a solid group who really understand how our money is manipulated and what the solutions really are. Because if a depression comes, there will be those who call themselves conservatives who will come forward advancing solutions framed by the international bankers. Beware of calls to return to a gold standard. Why? Simple. Because never before has so much gold been so concentrated outside of American hands. And never before has so much gold been in the hands of international governmental bodies such as the World Bank and International Monetary Fund. A gold-backed currency usually brings despair to a nation, and to return to it would certainly be a false solution in our case. Remember, we had a gold-backed currency in 1929 and during the first four years of the Great Depression. Likewise, beware of any plans advanced for a regional or world currency. This is the international banker's Trojan horse. Educate your member of Congress. It only takes a few persuasive members to make the others pay attention. Most congressmen just don't understand the system. Some understand it, but are so influenced by bank PAC contributions that they ignore it, not realizing the gravity of their neglect. We hope we've made a valuable contribution to the national debate on monetary reform. It remains for each man to do his duty, consistent with his state in life. May God give us the light to help reform our nation and ourselves. We say ourselves because ultimately vast multitudes of men are going to be driven more and more to desperation by the accumulation of the world's wealth in fewer and fewer hands. Men will tend to become like their oppressors, selfish and greedy. Rather, let's keep in mind during this period of reform a warning not to lose sight of greater things, as Pope Pius XI put it. 
For what will it profit men that a more prudent distribution and use of riches make it possible for them to gain even the whole world, if thereby they suffer the loss of their own souls? What will it profit to teach them sound principles in economics if they permit themselves to be so swept away by selfishness, by unbridled and sordid greed, that hearing the commandments of the Lord, they do all things contrary?